Hey folks, this is Kalani. An interesting topic of debate which got wildly out of hand back when Legion was in beta was the discussion about flying. Should we be able to fly in a new expansion? When should flying be unlocked? We've had a lot of expansions which dealt with these questions a little differently. The standard was to unlock flying at or near max level of the new content, so you would happily run around on your ground mounts until you leveled up, and then you were allowed back into the skies. In one expansion, we were even able to fly right from the get-go, but the discussion moved more towards should we even be able to fly in new expansions, rather than when should it be unlocked. The debate went back and forth for a good chunk of Legion, and we were eventually able to unlock flying after patch 7.3 released, providing of course you complete the required achievements. It seems going forward, flying will be tied to these Pathfinder achievements, and Battle for Azeroth is shaping up to follow suit. We have our first Pathfinder achievement for BFA on the beta right now, so let's have a look at what we'll have to do to start our adventure towards flying through the open skies once more. Remember, we're still in beta, so everything is subject to change and may not reflect the finished product. Alrighty, so the achievement is pretty straightforward right now. It's more or less the same thing as what we had to do in Legion, at least for this first part. There's five sub-achievements. You're going to have to complete the Battle for Azeroth Explorer achievement, explore all the new zones in Battle for Azeroth. So that's Tiragard Sound, Drustvar, Stormsong Valley, Zuldazar, Nazmir, and Voldoon. So Horde or Alliance, you'll have to hop around both islands to explore all six zones, which still shouldn't be too bad. You're going to be taken to the other island when you progress your war campaign, and there's going to be world quests all over the place, so you might not even have to go out of your way to get this achievement, providing you're at least a little interested in completing your world quests. The other parts of your Pathfinder achievement are Zandalar Forever, Zandalar Diplomat, Cool Tourist, and Cool Taras Diplomat. Zandalar Forever and Cool Tourist deal with all of your zone's quest lines and special quest lines relating to your island. For Zandalar Forever, you have to finish all of your quest lines in Zuldazar, Nazmir, and Voldoon, then complete a special quest line called the Bloodgate, and finish things up with a scenario that ties everything together called Zandalar Forever. For Cool Tourist, it's more of the same deal. Finish up all of these storyline quests in Tiragard, Stormsong, and Drustvar. That's actually it for the Alliance so far, so whether or not something else will be added in later on is something we'll have to watch out for, or maybe the Alliance just doesn't have the same kind of quests. The Diplomat achievements are also nothing particularly new, earn revered reputation with every faction listed below. Now there aren't any reps listed in the achievement specifically, but all of the achievements are kind of below that meta achievement in the achievements list, so whether that means literally every faction, or if some part is just missing, telling us which ones we actually need, again we'll have to wait and see. Beta is beta, but I would expect every available rep to be included anyways. Both the Nightfallen and the Wardens were included for the Legion Pathfinder Diplomat achievement. The Wardens were a pretty special case because that rep didn't really tie to just one zone, and the Nightfallen took a lot more work when compared to the others. Those two reps are kind of like the neutral reps in Battle for Azeroth, the Tortolan and the Champions of Azeroth. It looks like the Tortolan will be spread out amongst all zones, while the Champions of Azeroth are shaping up to take way more effort when compared with the other reps. All in all, I reckon we'll have to be revered with every rep available, which is a total of six, to complete your Diplomat achievements. When it comes to farming this rep, it shouldn't take too long. The three zone factions should be a good way into friendly, if not already at Honored, by the time you're done leveling or completing all of the story quests, and your PvP faction, that's the Honorbound for the Horde and the 7th Legion for the Alliance, should be well on their way too after you're done with your war campaign. After that, you're probably going to be relying on world quests and inscription contracts, but I wouldn't expect it to take too long overall. So, finish up your storyline quests for your faction, hit Revered Reputation with all reputations, and explore the new world we have access to. That's not too bad when you consider we had a longer task list for Legion Pathfinder Part 1. We had to complete a whole bunch of world quests, though I guess we'll probably end up doing that regardless. We also had to finish our class hall campaign, which doesn't exist in Battle for Azeroth, so that wouldn't make too much sense either. We do have the war campaign instead, but you're going to have to do that to get your PvP faction rep, so again, we'll probably finish it while working on the other achievements. Maybe it's not a shorter task list then. Maybe it just took out some of the stuff that we're going to end up getting while working on the achievements, which take a little bit more effort and time. Now, some of you may notice that the achievement lists both the Horde and the Alliance achievements as requirements for Pathfinder Part 1, and I'm glad to report that we received confirmation that you will finish Pathfinder by just completing Horde or Alliance related achievements. You don't need both factions to get your bonuses, so you can put your pitchforks away, they're not needed just yet. 
But this is just Pathfinder Part 1. You're not going to be able to fly with this achievement alone. All it does is increase your mounted movement speed in the new zones of Zandalar and Kulturas. Flying will probably come later. Maybe quite a bit later. We can try to line up the timelines of this expansion with Legion and guesstimate how long it might take. So Legion Pathfinder Part 2 came with Patch 7.2, which released about 7 months into the expansion. It took quite a long time to get through Part 2 too, so we have to take that into consideration. We could be looking at Pathfinder Part 2 and flying being introduced around March of 2019, if Battle for Azeroth's patch cycle remains somewhat close to Legion's, which we actually have reason to believe it won't. The dev team actually said that our first patch in Legion, patch 7.1, probably came too early. While a lot of people were excited that patches were coming faster and faster, I guess the first patch was maybe a bit too fast in the eyes of our overlords. With that in mind, I wonder if they will delay the first real content patch of Battle for Azeroth by a month or more, which could push our Pathfinder Part 2 patch back further and further. We might not end up flying until halfway through next year, which I'm honestly not too bothered about. We have a new Flight Master's Whistle for Battle for Azeroth, and that's all I really need to keep me happy while exploring Zandalar and Kul Taras. Even though Pathfinder Part 2 might be a ways away, we can guess what might be included in the requirements by once again comparing back to Legion. It seems like a lot of what they've done in Legion will be carrying over into Battle for Azeroth, and Part 2 of Legion's Pathfinder revolved around the new content being released with the achievement. Patch 7.2 brought us the Broken Shore, complete with a new faction, new storyline, and a whole bunch more world quests. So naturally, the Pathfinder achievement had us explore the Broken Shore and gain revered reputation with the new faction, the Armies of Legion Fall. Does this perhaps betray part of the content cycle of Battle for Azeroth, a new island or continent with even more stuff for us to do? I wonder if we might end up venturing underwater instead, having a zone down in the depths instead of up on land. It could be really cool either way. The Alliance has one island, the Horde has one island, and then we fight over the next chunk of land we find, whether it be actual land or at the bottom of the sea, all the while working towards some form of goal. It's worth noting that Queen Ajara is supposed to be an end of tier raid boss at some point during Battle for Azeroth. The dev team said early on that she was going to be the Gul'dan of this expansion, which doesn't really line up with the content cycle of Legion because Gul'dan was already dead by the time we got to fly, but that might mean we're already underwater at that point if we're taking the fight to Ajara. The dev team could surprise us all and take us back to the mainland, though. What if the new content ends up being focused around us fighting over the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor? The Horde has all but secured Kalimdor, and the Alliance has all but secured the Eastern Kingdoms. There's just two pockets of resistance left, the Exodar and Silvermoon City. What if the new content revolves around us assaulting and defending those areas? With Teldrassil burnt to ashes and the Undercity sacked, each faction is so close to dominating an entire continent. The main reason we seek out allies on Zandalar and Kulturas is to make use of their naval forces. Sure, those boats and ships could be put to great use against Azara, the Naga, and eventually Nazoth, but they're also great for fighting amongst ourselves too. We need ships to get to Azimist Isle, we need ships to get back behind Silvermoon, maybe the faction conflict is going to escalate even further before it comes crashing to the ground when the Void shows up. I don't think they would actually do away with another set of capital cities, but it makes for a great foundation to push both content and story. Remember that the Warfronts are also based on current borders of Alliance and Horde aggression, so anywhere that faction conflict sparks up could be another map or area to turn into a warfront. It's all a guessing game right now, but I would expect us to have to farm up even more reputation and explore any new areas that come our way to eventually be able to fly in Battle for Azeroth. This is actually kind of exciting. Right now we don't have any idea what the dev team could throw our way. During Legion we knew we'd go back to the Broken Shore, we knew we'd eventually take the fight to kill Jaden, and we had a general idea of what might happen from there. All we know is that Ajara is invited to the party and will probably end up neck deep in Void, but how we get there, the lands we get to explore, and the conflicts along the way are quite a mystery. I wonder if the new Warcraft novel will shed any light on this. I'll have to remember to pick that up when it releases. It's not like it matters though, right? We'll end up on some long lost world, or far beneath the waves, or some other place which conveniently doesn't allow us to fly, and we're all back to using our ground mounts even though we finished the achievements. Just like Argus. At least we still have our flight whistles. They really are a godsend in a world without flying. 
But that's it for our little preview of what our path to flying might look like in Battle for Azeroth. What do you think of the Pathfinder achievements? Do you think we should be able to fly without doing a bunch of legwork? Or do you maybe think that flying shouldn't be available in new expansions at all? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you want to hop on that train and support the channel directly, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.